InsideThunder.com. Powered by Wheeler Whitlock Insurance. Hi, I'm Randy Renner at Chesapeake Energy Arena. All of the drama and most of the interest went out of this game about 90 minutes before tip-off when the Lakers announced that Kobe Bryant, because of a sore right shoulder, would not be able to play. Even had Bryant played, it probably wouldn't have been that much of a game, but it likely would have been a bit closer than it was. Thunder ended up winning by 40, 118 to 78, the largest margin of victory by far ever between these two franchises, even when the Thunder were playing in Seattle as the Supersonics. Kevin Durant ended up with 22 points. Russell Westbrook had 13 along with 11 assists. None of the starters uh, played in the fourth quarter, and uh, some of the reserves got some big minutes. And uh, Ennis Cantor ended up with 19 points and 14 rebounds uh, to lead the Thunder in bench points. After the game, Billy Donovan talked about it. So did Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook. Well, obviously we got them on a on a night with without uh, without Kobe, um, but I think with that being said, uh, you know I, I felt like our guys came out pretty focused on a on a quick turnaround, so to speak, after the back to back, and uh, you know it was good to see our guys maintain their focus there in the second half. Uh, I thought we had good ball movement, played unselfishly, and um, you know defensively the numbers um, you know look good defensively, but be anxious to watch the film and see you know just actually how well you know we guarded. Um, but it was good to see everybody get involved, everybody contribute, and everybody help. Nick Allo, KCThunder.com. In that third quarter, you had that possession. I think you got three offensive rebounds. You're encouraging the guys, pass it, pass it, pass it. Despite the blow, were you guys still trying to work on some things here tonight? Yeah, you know, I think it starts, you know, a lot of times with Russell and Kevin. You know, Kevin made a comment, we need to keep working on that, and, and, and they're doing it. You know, and I think when you've got, you know, two players like Russell and Kevin that are, you know, that unselfish and willing to pass, and, you know, Kevin, you know, bypassed several shots on that possession. They just kept moving the ball, and, you know, I think it found Serge in the corner for a three. So it was good to see them share the ball. And I thought they shared the ball really the whole night. You know, I think we ended up with 28 assists. Um, but I thought our ball movement was good, and, and uh, that, that possession, I think, epitomized them trying to, you know, really, really play unselfishly. This is the second game in, in three games where you've not had anybody exceed 30 minutes. Um, I mean, what does that do for a team to have that kind of rest for, from guys? Well, you know, I think even though I think Kevin and, 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 and Russell, both those guys, after the Portland game in the, in the third quarter, got a chance to rest the fourth. You, you know, you're still playing back to back there. I think there still is the emotion, you know, of going from one game to the next. I think there, you know, definitely is some form of fatigue. You probably can ask them, you know, how they feel. They, I think, do a really good job of taking care of their bodies, and our medical team does a good job of helping them move from one day to the next recovery wise. Um, but I think over a long season, you know, when guys can rest like that, I think it's always going to be good for them. You know, what kind of dividends that plays or what kind of impact that is for them, they're probably with their bodies better to talk to and ask them about that. Are there instances where, where a technical foul isn't necessarily something that you, you think is a big deal, like when Serge picks up one for like an elbow or something like that? Is that, is that something where you just kind of say, eh, it's... Well, I'm, I'm anxious to go back and watch the film, you know, because obviously Serge is trying to go in there and offensive rebound. Ennis is trying to rebound. So to see exactly what happened, you know, those plays are down in the lane. I didn't have a clear look to, to really maybe comment right now. I could probably comment after I watched the film. You know, certainly we want to stay away from technical fouls, and um, we don't want to give teams free points. But, you know, I want to go back and look at those plays and see what they actually look like. Back to the play, I think Nick asked you about um, the three offensive rebounds and moving the ball to the floor. In a game like this where you're up 26 going into halftime, was that kind of a, a focus or a message to try to come out and say, let's, let's work on some of our principles, let's try to really you know, play to the identity that we're trying to establish? Yeah, um, I, I've always got a, a belief that the scoreboard doesn't dictate you doing your job. Um, you know, everybody's got a job to do while they're out there, and the, the scoreboard should not dictate you know, us not doing our job. And, you know, Kevin and Russell have been, I think, in a lot of ways, the catalyst to that. And I think if you look at the way those guys were moving the basketball on that possession, it was really, it was great to watch, you know, when you have two players that really bypassed open shots to try to keep the ball moving to their teammates. I think it shows a great level of trust when you do that. And um, it was good to see them. And, you know, Kevin came over to me and said, you know, we, we need to, we need to keep working at this. We need to keep getting better at this. And, um, 
it was it was just good to see them do that in that position. I really I really felt like the entire game they're they're trying to play the right way. They're trying to do the right things and. Um, you know, there was a couple times where Serge actually passed up open shots, normally at that 15-foot range, got it to the other side, and he actually got the ball back in the lane, you know, for a little short jump hook, you know, which was maybe a better shot uh, than the one he would have taken uh, on the first catch. So I think we're getting better. I think their intention on that is much better. Um, I think they see the value in it. I think they understand the importance of it. And um, I think they've been pretty committed to it so far. Steve McGee, News 9. He's one Excuse of the best me. players ever to play the game. Were you a little disappointed that you didn't see Kobe on the court? Um, I, I don't want to say I was disappointed. Um, you know, I think when you're coaching, you're, 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 you're dealing with game planning, you're dealing with personnel, you're dealing with how you're going to guard actions and those kind of things. Um, certainly to your point about the legacy he's left, you know, upon the game of basketball is really remarkable. Um, you know, hopefully it's not too serious for him of, of sitting out. Um, but you know, his whole career has been with the Lakers, so he means obviously an enormous amount to this team and to their franchise. Can you expand a little bit on what you saw from Cameron Payne in that final stretch? And is that a proper stretch to evaluate a young player in when when the game's well in hand? Well, you know, I thought Cameron came in and really did a nice job. Um, yeah, I, th I think in some of the D League games, just one, I went to one of the games um, and I've seen some on film. Um, He's, he's a lot more of a priority scoring. And I think the balance coming back with this group is understanding as a point guard, there's nothing wrong with taking open shots. There's nothing wrong with getting to the paint, getting to the lane. But you want to be efficient offensively. And he did a really, really nice job that, that last nine minutes of the fourth. I thought of getting other guys shots, getting other guys involved. He did some really, really good things. And then I think the shots he did take were, were good shots. They were at the rim. You know, they were open. Um, so I thought it was a real good nine minutes for him experience-wise to get under his belt. I mean, you can't predict the future, so you didn't know how this game was going to turn out. But this would have been a good game to get Mitch McGarry in there and get him some minutes. What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, any time the game's like that, um, you know, you, 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 you get everybody a chance to, to play in those situations. It, but you know what, like, the bigger key is to what I said earlier is 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 doing your job and not playing the scoreboard. And sometimes when – you're in the game and the score is a little bit different, there's a different level of pressure that a guy may feel, a different level of responsibility, you know, somebody may feel. So sometimes those minutes, they're not under, you know, this crucial, if there's a turnover or a missed shot, doesn't maybe have the same kind of ramifications as it does, you know, in a different kind of game. Um, but it still gives those guys experience out there playing. It still gives them a level of confidence. It gives them, you know, an opportunity to, to make mistakes and also do things well and learn from it. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm looking my chops for any whoever's on me, any game, no matter who it is. You know, some games I come through, some games I don't. But every chance I get, I try to try to just be me. And uh, tonight they had a, they had you know they had a rookie on me, but you know I try not to worry about that and and uh, just play my game. And uh, tonight we did a good job. Yeah, I mean, it's an easy play. <laughs> you know, he's as athletic as Steven, you know, just toss the ball up there, you go get it. Seems like things are going pretty well right now. Overall, how do you feel like you guys are playing? Uh, we could be better. You know, that's how I look at it. Just trying to always uh, keep growing and uh, never get complacent and settle. So, yeah, we got to practice tomorrow. We got a good road trip coming up. Just got to get ready for it. You kind of disappointed that Kobe wasn't able to play tonight? Yeah, definitely wanted to play against him, wanted to compete against him. Uh, but I'm sure, I'm sure he'll play in L.A. Yeah, even in those minutes when the outcome is well in hand, are you guys just trying to continue building as a group during those times? Uh, just trying to play the right way. Uh, like I said, regardless of what's going on, I'm just trying to build good habits and get ourselves ready for the next game. The possession in the third quarter where you guys got three offensive rebounds, move the ball on the floor, and Serge knocked down the corner three. Was, is that a satisfying type of offensive set where the ball's flying all over the floor? Uh, like I said, for the third time, uh, we've been doing a good job moving the basketball. We just play the right way regardless of what's going on. we got to be happy with the results. You got to talk about hooking up with um, Steven. It seems like you know that's really working for you on the alley you play, pick and roll. Yeah, Steven's uh, – my job is to be able to find him, uh, put the ball above the rim. He's very athletic and uh, giving the ball where he's more successful and uh, try to find ways to 
and put the ball above the rim where he can go get. You find like the you feel like the chemistry is you know now there and you guys are clicking on that you know that role that you are. Uh, better man, we're better. We getting used to uh, our sets and used to different tricks and different back doors and different things that come from our sets and we're just trying to find easy buckets. Were you disappointed that you didn't get the chance to compete against Kobe today? Uh, we play him again in two another two days, so see him then. <laughs> Russ, KD, and Billy D after the game on Saturday. Thunder will practice on Sunday before getting on their charter jet and flying to the West Coast. They will stay in L.A. for a few days because they play the Clippers on Monday night. Then we'll practice and uh, then play the Lakers again on Wednesday night before coming back here for a Christmas Day game against the Chicago Bulls that will be an exclusive ABC telecast. We'll keep you updated. Keep it right here at InsideThunder.com. Thank <laughs> you.